and Opinions Podcast number one. This is the maiden voyage of podcast Opinions. and Opinions. So uh, you're listening to me, Jordan Rodriguez, and Kyle Kramer, the sidekick. So yeah, uh, we write and talk about TV and movie shows that we like and give our opinions whether you want them or not. And so, you know, no different than the website, this podcast will be us giving our opinions no matter how popular or unpopular they may be. This is basically just for people who hate reading. Yes, which is a majority of people, um, in my experience. Uh, anyway, so today we want to talk about The Flash and Arrow is coming back this week, uh, October 6th, which is Tuesday. The Flash premieres uh, the day after, Wednesday the 7th, we get The Arrow. Um, so I'm more excited about The Flash because I think it's a better overall show. What do you think, Kyle? Well, we've only seen one season of The Flash, but they really had to be convincing with that first season, I think, because they had to convince people that they needed another DC superhero show in their life. And I think they did a really good job. It's got its own vibe. It's lighthearted compared to Arrow, which is super dark comparatively. Yeah. Um, but I think season three of Arrow just got a little bit tired. I think that was mostly the critique of fans is that it just didn't stack up to the level of anticipation and, and the tenseness of Slade Wilson in season two. Um, you know, you just had sort of this tired theme of Oliver being this conflicted anti-hero half the time. Yeah, I loved the era when it first came out. That first season was so cool. He was like, he didn't care. He would just, he would just like, kill people, like, without thinking, which is kind of like, it was a little offsetting at first to see your superhero, like, just killing, like, you know, the bad guys or whatever. But it was cool because it was different. And then later he changed. He's like, I'm not, I'm not a killer. Uh, I used to be. I'm something else, whatever. Um... But then season two was even better, in my opinion, especially during the halfway mark when they introduced Slade Wilson was back and he was out for, like, this revenge. And it was so good when he, like, revealed himself. And it was just such an amazing season, especially the second half. And then so going in for off that high into season three, super excited. And then it was just such a letdown. Like, nothing – I felt like nothing really happened in season three, other than, like, we got the Atom, which was cool, because it was, like, a new hero, and it was, you know, Superman Returns, but not, which was, which was cool, but, but other than that, I mean, the, you know, the Oliver Felicity thing got tired and strung out, uh, Roy was cool, like, he was actually, like, the sidekick, you know, doing his Roy thing. And now he's gone. And now he's gone, like, my favorite side character of that show, so... Mm. But I, I am a little optimistic with Arrow because they did a couple things that I think um, set up this wave of shows really well. Uh, number one, they've sort of closed the book on phase one of the Arrow franchise. Like, yeah. They've set it up now to where they can pretty much start fresh and develop this whole new storyline with new characters and new villains. Mm -hmm. They're setting up um, you know, the introduction of Speedy. They're getting yeah. um, you know, some more characters involved. And, um, you know, in addition to now we've got Legends of Tomorrow uh, coming alongside both Arrow and The Flash, and, and both of those shows played a part in setting up this third spinoff. Yeah. So I think there's a lot they can do with crossovers and with mm -hmm. characters visiting multiple shows to really keep it interesting. Yeah. And it's almost like you're going to have to, whether you want to or not, you're going to have to keep up with the Arrow if you want to keep up with the other two shows, because they all sort of intertwine. Right. Uh, I think, yeah, from what I've, like, read and heard online, it seemed like the show producers, creators, directors, they kind of all got the hint that season three wasn't that great. Um, just kind of, it's almost like they're reformatting the show where I think Oliver's going to actually enjoy being the Arrow. And actually, I think he's going to be the Green Arrow officially, which is, like, the official comic book name, which is cool. It's about time. Um, so, I don't know. From what I hear, he's going to, like, take it a little lighter and be a little more happy-go-lucky. I mean... I don't know. He's not going to be like the Flash, I don't think. But, but even in the comics, I think he was more. I mean, he was kind of like you know serious, but he had fun doing it at the same time to mm -hmm. an extent. Where I feel like Oliver just always just tortured and like leave me alone. I must be alone, and it it just it get it got old real quick. Um, you know, always trying to like push people away and blah 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 blah. It was just kind of the same tortured mentality just got really really old really fast. Well and I like what they did with um with the Flash T V show and mm -hmm. um you know with the characters because it's so much more lighthearted. 
Yeah. And, you know, you almost feel like you're watching, like, the DC version of the Peter Parker origin story. Yeah. Um, Because that's that's what it felt a lot like in the beginning episodes. And I love a good origin story. Well, it's like he had fun uh, with his powers. And Mm -hmm. I, I hate it with, like, a lot of superhero TV shows, cartoons, movies. It's like... These people are like, oh, they hate their powers, mm-hmm. or like they're like, oh, why this is me? But like, come on, like real life, if you like had this super amazing ability to fly, or or like were super strict, like you, that would be awesome, and mm-hmm. you would be super excited and like wanting to help people and wanting to show off from time to time mm-hmm. and like have a good time with it. Like I think if the vast majority of people, unless it's like a weird like freak thing, you turn to the Hulk, like yeah, no one wants that, but <laughs> you know. Some people might want that. That's true, but... Don't turn that down you know, entirely. I just kind of got tired of the, oh, I'm cursed with these powers, but I have a duty to, you know, do this. So that's what was kind of fun about The Flash. It's like he embraced it, he loved it, and, like, he's all about making himself, like, faster and, sure. you know, which is cool. It's fun. It's refreshing, especially... It was just a lot, you know... It was very refreshing from the flat or for the arrow, you know, just coming out of this dark hole, and then it's like, oh, The Flash, he's happy, you know? It's cool. Well, it's interesting, too, how... Both shows ended almost like on the polar opposite ends of mm-hmm. the suspense scale. I mean, yeah. Arrow, they really tied it up real nice, mm-hmm. and, you know, it, it, everything was basically resolved. Yeah. Whereas The Flash, they just leave you right in the middle of everything. Like, yeah. Barry has been running around that, you know, tornado in the sky yeah. for the last six months. Yeah. We don't know what's going on. It so. is, yeah. Uh, it's going to be really cool to see how they both pick pick things up yeah and um what the direction that they go well what's really cool is i think we're going to get like alternate universes which is going to lead into new villains and like new um you know new good guys new like alternate versions of barry like you saw in the trailer like you get a jay garrick flash which is like an alternate universe flash so you're going to be getting some of the good guys from different universes and some of the bad guys so it's like there's like so much potential to take the story so many different ways. It's kind of like an awesome plot device that you have. Oh, we have alternate dimensions, so let's take the story here or let's go there. So it'll be, I don't know, I think it'll be really fun. Um, but they definitely have a lot to live up to since season one was so successful and popular. Sure. So uh, shifting gears a little bit to a different show, um, yeah. Walking Dead is about yes. to hit the screens again. Yes. Um, and and actually, Fear the Walking Dead made its debut already. Yeah, um, I know you. I just watched the first mm-hmm. episode um, like yesterday. It was good. Um, you know, it's the first episode, so you got to give them a little grace. Like to me, it was just, it was a really long episode, um, and it, it was a little slow. But I like the characters. Like there's like I don't know. I forget his name. But he's like a druggie, mm-hmm. and everyone's like, "Oh, you're crazy. You didn't see a zombie eat, you know, or whatever." I mean, he didn't call it a zombie, but he saw. Some Walking Dead, you know, some his like girlfriend eating some guy in like a drug house. I don't. know. You'll have to watch it, but I don't know. The characters are interesting, um, and it's in L.A., which is really exciting because it's just like super densely populated. It'll be really interesting to see how that, you know, how they escape and how they survive in an urban setting as opposed to the you know the Walking Dead where they kind of go out into the woods in Georgia or wherever it is, and you know they occasionally go back to Atlanta. But yeah, I don't know. It's it's really cool. I'm definitely gonna like catch up probably this week and watch like binge watch all the episodes but yeah i like it um and the walking dead i finally caught up on the this past season five and it was like i i I get so mad at myself because i'll watch the walking dead and then i'll stop for like months and then i'll go back to it i'm like why did i stop watching it's so good um so yeah all that said i'm super excited for season six Mm -hmm, yeah yeah and it looks like it's going to be a really intense season yeah. I mean, and it's going to be tough to top because season five i mean there was just literal throat slitting at the beginning yeah. of season five so i mean it was they, they stepped it up and no- up a notch then but yeah. um i think they're going to keep that momentum going and for those of you who haven't seen fear the walking dead um it, they did a really good job of making it its own story i think so far but at the same time is very much attached to that same world and yeah it's a lot of the vibe is the same uh, actually i think a genius storytelling uh, yeah. device to have like an outcast or a person who everyone mm-hmm. thinks is not in his right mind be the first person to yeah. experience the zombie outbreak because yeah. then that really allows them to slowly allow the city to just devolve yeah. into chaos it's nothing instantaneous yeah It'll be interesting to see if, like, with Fear the Walking Dead, if it's, like, 
kind of follows the same formula as a Walking Dead, where it's like every main character dies at some point. Like you shouldn't get attached, or if it's going to keep like a core set of people. I don't know because I haven't watched many episodes, but it'll be interesting to see if they just like start killing, like you know, get a group, half of them dies, and then you know, or if it's going to be like you stick with the same people. I mean, it would be interesting. I don't know. But, yeah, for those of you who aren't familiar, it's basically, it takes place at the same time as The Walking Dead, just in a different geographical location. It's basically telling the story re- over again, but from the perspective of a group of people in L.A. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It's really cool. And a bit before... Yeah. Like, when by the time Rick Grimes wakes up, that's everything is pretty much wrecked already. Oh, uh, that's true. There's yeah. a lot that he missed, What, but, you know, because yeah. he was in a coma, but... Right. Um, this is taking you through the beginning. It doesn't tell you how it happened, right. which I think is genius. Like, yeah, they don't the, they don't show you the trick that you know the magician doesn't show you the trick immediately, mm-hmm. but they tease it a little bit. Like, yeah. oh, you know, do we see Patient Zero at the beginning of yeah. this episode, or or did she get it from someone else? You don't know. Right. But I think they've got a lot of a lot of story left to go. Yeah. So, really excited to see how that turns out. So let's talk movies now. Um, Transformers uh, just announced recently that they have four new titles uh, coming to the franchise, all directed by Michael Bay. Um, so these movies are awful. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know who's excited they about They keep that. getting made, and I don't know why. I, and I guess, you know, I'm kind of part of the problem because I've seen every one of those movies in theater. Um, How did I, you make it through all of them? I don't know. The first one... The first one I really like, I really liked, and I still really enjoy. Like to me, that as a standalone movie was really fun. It was new. It was different at the time. It was, you know, the action was sweet. Just seeing those big robots fight, like we hadn't really seen anything like that that well done ever. And I like Shia LaBeouf. I think he's good in that role. Even um, I know that's kind of an unpopular opinion, but I, I like him in that movie. And I, and I like the robots and the voice acting and the plot and the story. Like it, it was a good movie. Um, the second one came around, I was excited for. I saw that in theaters. I was, like, sorely disappointed. It was super long. Um, but then you yeah. went and watched the and other then, two, then, even after that disappointment? Yeah, I saw the third one. I was like, well, I've seen the first two. i got to see the third one. Um, it got worse. The third one was awful. And then they, you know, the fourth one with, with uh, what's his name? Matt Damon? No. That would be Marky Mark. <laughs> Mar- uh, what's his name? Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg. I always do that for some reason, confuse the two. But Mark Wahlberg, I like Mark Wahlberg. He's cool. Um, so I saw that, and he's cool, but those movies are awful. Um, it's just, like, long and boring. And like, it's just kind of the same thing over, and it's just I just don't care about the story. I, I don't know. They're just awful. So now we're getting four more. Mm-hmm. They're not even taking their time. They've already said it. We're, we're going to make it four more, and, you know, we're going to give them our money for some reason and still be disappointed. Well, we'll see. I'm, I think time will tell on whether they actually go ahead and make that many or not. Yeah. I mean, if it, if the franchise continues to make money and if people continue to go and see them, you know, obviously they'll keep making them. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't put it past the American public. I, I, I have a hope that the American public sort of realizes that there's way better cinema yeah. than just, like, the mindless action that is Transformers. And, and don't get me wrong, yeah. I, I love action films, and I yeah. love special effects and no, really cool visuals, but the acting it's and, and the storytelling, story. yeah, it's just got, it's gotten really bad. Yeah. Well, see, and I feel about this way, and you disagree about Fast and Furious, because I hate those movies so much, more than the Transformers movies. I'd rather watch all the Transformers movies than watch four of the Furious movies. To me, they are the epitome of just like lazy movies. They're 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 loud and they're big and they're it's cool action, but there's, to me, there's just nothing else there. I don't know. Sure, I mean, having seen every one of the movies and mm-hmm. then some more than once, um, I actually really like the characters. Yeah. Starting from about like the fourth film, they mm-hmm. they started pouring more into the character development and the, and the story and the plot. Um, first few movies, yeah, I mean. There wasn't a whole... It was about the races. Yeah. Pretty much exclusively. But um, they've done a really good job, I think, with... As um, they realized that we're not going to be able to continue to do this... Unless we really start making care about Vin Diesel's character... And and up until very recently, Paul Walker's character. And to me, Vin Diesel is a bad actor. So it's like, it's hard to care about him when I just don't believe him. Sure. Like, as an actor, he's just not good, in my opinion... But, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. The Rock's in there now, which, to me, he's, like, 
the best action star of our time. Like right now, like he's like what Arnold Schwarzenegger was back in the day, or, or Stallone. Um, I mean, I that was probably a good move for those movies, but still, for me, the, it doesn't make the movies worth watching. Sure, but I mean, I get you know, it makes sense that he's in it, and I think that's probably what's really helped the movies a lot is you know the Rock's inclusion. It was cool. I will admit, I saw Furious Five, and I think in theaters, and I think that was the. Um, I think that was the first one with The Rock was in it. And I was excited to see it because I just wanted to see him and Vin Diesel pound each other's face and those two, like, massive titans just going at it. And it was cool. But, uh, yeah. I don't well, know. And, and the most recent one, actually, Jason Statham and The Rock yeah. go at it, and that is something else. Like, yeah. That is an amazing, uh, really well choreographed fight scene. Yeah. Um, maybe the best one even in the franchise so far. But, yeah. um, talking, too, about, like, Movies that sort of, like, you don't know if the story's going to be that good, and, you know, previous installments have yeah. led you to believe that it probably won't do well. Um, Assassin's Creed, the, yeah. the movie, is getting made, and, and, you know, historically, video game adaptions into movies don't generally do that well, aren't very no. well received. Um, it, it's just difficult to take, like, yeah. a game has, like, hours and hours of content and story. Yeah. And then you try to condense all that into a movie, and you try to not make it the exact same, but yeah. you want to keep it true to the story, and, um, you know, that's just difficult when most of what you do is just, like, shoot people, or, yeah, you know, you're exactly. you're doing, like, the killing part. Well, it's of like, sometimes people. there's either too much story to make into a condensed movie, or there's too little story to make anything out of it, so, mm-hmm. yeah. But I think with um, this Assassin's Creed endeavor, what they have going for them is that the story in the Assassin's Creed games is actually very solid. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's one of the best story arcs in a video game that I've ever experienced. Yeah. Um, so they've already got Michael Fassbender to yeah. play the main protagonist character. Really good move on their part. I think yeah. he'll be great in that role. But then they recently just got um, a couple more guys. Jeremy Irons mm-hmm. is going to be coming on in that role. And... Um, yeah, with Michael Fassbender, I'm super excited because I think he can do anything. Yeah. Like, he could be anyone. Like, I want him to be the new Bond. I think he's that good. You think so? I think he's, like, he's got, like, the charm and the accent, and but he's, like, dangerous as well. Like, he can be, like, kind of B.A., like, he can be tough, but he's also, like, a good-looking man. Like, he just, he looks cool. I mean, he's, he's suave and he's dangerous and all that. He's, to me, he is Bond. I think he'd be perfect. But, and definitely multi-talented too. I mean, we saw him in Prometheus. Yeah, um, and he—I thought he was the strongest character in yeah. that installment. Um, Brendan Gleeson is the other guy yeah. that, that came on on uh, the Assassin's Creed cast. So, um, with all of that going on there, like they have good talent as far as acting goes. I think what it's really going to come down to is the story writing. And yeah. um, Ubisoft, the creators of Assassin's Creed, have partnered with that studio oh, cool. to um, really be involved in the writing process and the production process. So yeah. that right there yeah. is a, a step in the right direction, I think. I hope so. Um, because by now they have to know that they just don't want to fall prey to the mistakes of those that came before them. Yeah. You know, whether it's like Doom or <laughs> Prince of Persia uh, yeah. or Hitman or... Max Payne, like... I loved how Jake Gyllenhaal was the Prince of Persia. Like, I think he's a great actor. I think he's really... I think he's really talented, really one of the better actors of our time. But he, he just doesn't look Persian at all. I don't, I don't even remember that yeah. story or that movie if he was, like, supposed to be, like, not, but he was just in that area. But he... Yeah. There's nothing really Middle Eastern about Jake Gyllenhaal. No. It's kind of an interesting role he took on. But that's besides the point. I guess as long as you're going to completely suspend belief... Yeah. Like, you might as well not pay attention to yeah. the accuracy of the ethnicity of the actors yeah. anyway. It, it was kind of like with Moses, and they uh, cast Christian Bale as, mm-hmm. as or Exodus. Um, they cast Christian Bale as Moses, and I don't know. That was an okay movie. I think it could have been a lot better, but I just don't buy Moses as being born and raised in Egypt as a, you know, a Jewish kid, you know, but... Right. Yeah. I mean, he's a good actor, but he's just not... He needs a tan. I nah, now I didn't see Exodus. What <laughs> yeah. I what I what I saw and then was like never again mm-hmm. was Noah. I watched Noah. I didn't and see Noah. I, I just it. I, I don't know what I expected. Yeah. Going into it because I should have basically guessed that it wouldn't really be good. Yeah. But um, 
I was very solidly convinced mm-hmm. that I did not want to experience that movie again or anything like it when yeah. I had to witness Emma Watson give birth. Like, Ew. that that wasn't really good for me. I don't want... Yeah. Uh, with, yeah, with, I don't know. For me, with Noah, the thing that turned me off was the trailer, like... I don't know, there's some, like, big swooping scene where it shows, like, all the, like, animals and, like, there's, like, snakes going into the ark. And it just looked really fake. Like, it looked, like, bad fake. And I, I know that that would probably be a really difficult scene to do, like, you know, in real life. Having all these animals, like, running towards a, a boat. But I don't know. What they did just... Yeah, and like I said, I didn't see the movie. But the trailer, it just kind of turned me off. It looked kind of cheap. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. Russell Crowe's a great actor and he was probably cool for that role, maybe. I don't really know, but... I don't know, it just didn't look... I don't know, with movies like that, like... I don't know, we've gotten spoiled, like, I, I want it to look, like, perfect. Which is probably asking a lot mm-hmm. of the movie creators, but... I don't know, it just looked a little a little fakey to me, but... Well, I think what it boils down to, it, whether it's a biblical adaption, or, or whether it's from a book, or from mm-hmm. a video game, doesn't really matter. Yeah. If you're gonna take a story that already exists in a popular medium... You have to do it justice, yeah. and that's difficult to do because everyone has their own interpretation right. about what's good about it and what they liked. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, it, essentially, the overarching theme is you have to stay true to the most part to the story. Yeah, and that just hasn't happened in these movies. Yeah. So, okay. mm-hmm. speaking of movies, uh, The Martian number one in the box office, domestic and foreign. From what I hear, I haven't even seen the movie yet, which mm-hmm. is a sin on my part. I know, me neither. Uh, I just haven't had the time to go pony up the $50 or whatever it is that <laughs> the know. movie theater is going to charge are me. so expensive nowadays. Mm-hmm. But I want to see it. Um, I like Matt Damon. And it was funny, like, when I saw, like, the first trailer for it, I was like, is this, like, an Interstellar prequel? Like, I'm confused, because mm-hmm. he was obviously in that movie. Wait, did you see Interstellar? I did not see Interstellar. Oh, well, spoiler alert, uh, his, he is in that movie. But uh, in that movie, he, he he's like basically he's been like stranded on a planet or whatever, and they they go to him. But I look, he's like like the I don't know, there's like I mean you can't really like have diversified space outfits, but he just looked a lot like this like it was the same character just from the trailer. I was like, well, this is like an Interstellar prequel or something. But apparently, it's you know The Martian was a book mm-hmm. um, that they've adapted into a movie. But it looks really cool. Um, the cast looks pretty solid. Um, I don't know, yeah, it looks really, looks really intriguing, like, basically he's stranded on Mars, I think it is, and he has to, like, figure out how to survive with, like, a little bit of food, and he has to, like, grow plants, but, I don't know, maybe I'll see it this week, uh, I want to see that in Everest, that looks really cool, Jake Gyllenhaal's in that, and, and a bunch of other people that I can't remember off the top of my head, but... And Everest is out now, also? Everest is out now, I, I think it's based on a true story... Just like the Martian, Not really. someone once climbed um, Everest, and this is kind yeah, of like that. I think it's something. <laughs> it's probably based off actual events, if not a true story. But for those yeah. of you who have seen the Martian or Everest, you can feel free to let us know how it was. Yeah. If it, if it's awful, you can let us know before we go and you know spend all that time Very and money. Good cash. Um, even though it's us that are supposed to be bringing the information to you, yeah. we're just lazy. That's, that's all it is. is yeah, we're just, we got stuff to do, and I we got know. things to talk about instead of being informed and watching yeah. this stuff. But yeah, I don't know. So yeah, those are two movies we need to go see. Other than that, I don't know. Is there anything out right now that's like worth watching? I feel like um, those are the ones we're yeah. we're on the cusp right now of. A really like big blockbuster, yeah. just barrage of different titles. I mean, obviously, in my opinion, the highlight of all that being Star Wars Seven. Um, there's no question, right? But but you've also got like you know, there's going to be another Star Trek on the horizon. Yeah. You've got all these superhero movies that are well, you what, know about to drop what, on the DC side of things. What I'm really looking forward to is the Reverend with Tom Hardy and DiCaprio. Holy cow, that looks like an amazing. Movie. Have you seen the trailer? I'm not even familiar with this. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. I you have to watch the trailer. Um, I don't know. You gotta watch it. I, I don't even want to like try to explain what it is because it wouldn't do justice. But basically, it takes place back in the day, like early American settlers, back and when so, people were actually called reverends. Uh, well, no, re- reverent. 
Oh, the reverent. Okay. Not the reverend. I, not about a bunch of preachers from the back in the day. I still haven't heard of this movie. <laughs> no. But now I have a better idea the reverend of what it's about. Might be a, yeah, but no, the reverend. So Tom Hardy, Leonardo DiCaprio, like already, this is going to be an amazing movie just based off that those two are in it together. Because um, I think Tom Hardy is great. I think everyone does probably. And DiCaprio, I've never really been disappointed with anything he's done. Um, you can say what you will about the Titanic, but it's like the biggest grossing movie of all time. So you know, you Avatar. Know, oh, was that bigger? I don't know. I feel like they're it was. about they're like the same, but both James Cameron. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting. But um, yeah, the Reverend. It's like it takes place back in the day. It, it says it's based on actual events. Obviously, you know they kind of always you know add to and take liberty with those actual event stories. But um, so yeah, they haven't given much away about the plot, which is nice from the trailer, but. Um, there's Native Americans, there's harsh living conditions, there's a bear that attacks someone. Um, it just looks really cool. Like, it's, the cinematography just looks beautiful. Like, I want to see it in IMAX, because some of the scenes they show, is just, like, these huge, like, mountains and landscapes and them surviving and getting killed, and I don't know. It just looks really epic. Like, yeah. It sounds pretty refreshing amidst, like, you know... We've got all these movies that are, I mean, we're really in, like, the midst of a sci-fi era right now, I feel yeah. like, between, like, movies like The Martian, Star Wars is coming back, we're doing all yeah. this Marvel DC stuff, like, everything is in space. Yes. You know? So, it'll be cool to have, like, an action film, or, you know, a, yeah. I guess maybe a drama as well, that's just really earthy and yeah. rugged. Being that grounded. Good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It looks really cool. Um, so, yeah. Excellent. Um, well, cool. Um, if you've seen any of these, or... If you have dissenting opinions or supporting opinions on uh, any of the shows or movies that we talked about, let us know. Um, but yeah, this has been the first podcast of Sin Opinions, and uh, I think it was really fun. Yeah, thanks for listening, people on the internet who are listening, and uh, congratulations. Yeah, we will do this again unless you tell us not. All right, bye-bye. Later. <laughs>